My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 100. Today is our lesson number 100. Day, day 3000. And 100, the 3 in the thousand, thousand place is to signify that we are in the third edition, third edition, day 100. We are on the topic of permutations versus combinations, topic that you will find on page number 301. Before we get going with the problem that, that I had planned to do originally uh, for this video, let me correct the mistake that I made, that, uh, that I made in yesterday's video. And as I was doing the problem, if you have watched yesterday's video, day number 3099, you would remember that I, rem I even remarked that the answer that I was getting on the blackboard was different from the answer that, uh, that I had in my notes. And I could not figure out what had gone wrong. Well, here it is. The problem, the very last problem that is, was how many different ways can five people sit on five chairs, numbered one through five, if you have to satisfy two conditions. First condition is that A does not want to sit in the sit on, on either end. A doesn't want to sit on either end and B insists B insists that he sits in the middle. So here it is. One, two, three, four, five chairs. B insists that he sits in the middle. So that's not a matter of choice. B has to go here. We satisfy. This is what is known as positive conditions. If they are told that we must do something, then of course that, that, that doesn't leave us much choice. We have to do it. Let's take care of that first. We always do this positive conditions first. Then the negative conditions. It says A does not want to sit on either ends. A cannot, A cannot go on this end or that end. It cannot go on either ends. Well, if A cannot go here and B is already sitting here, that leaves us with the choice of C, D, or E for this chair. That's three. Three choices. How many choices do we have here? Well, if, okay. so let's pick somebody. Let's pick C. Let's pretend we pick C. So if B is sitting here and C is sitting here, then we are still left with A, D, or E for this chair. And this is where I made a mistake. Okay, listen very carefully. This is where I made a mistake. In order for us to justify that we have three different choices, listen very carefully. What this assumes, okay, listen very, very carefully so that you don't end up making the same mistake because it's a very easy mistake to make. This assumes that these three people can just as easily go anywhere. They can go. Uh, these three people can be can be um, any one of these three people can be on this chair or that chair or that chair. That's what it assumes. If you were to put a three here, it assumes that any one of these three people can sit on any one of these three empty seats, which of course we know is not true. A cannot go there. So the mistake that I made is that I went directly to the to the second chair. We must satisfy the conditions first. We must always satisfy the conditions first before we worry about anything. And first we satisfy the positive conditions, which we have done so. Positive conditions being that the B must sit in the middle. So that's not a matter of choice. Now the negative conditions. A cannot sit here, which means we are left with three choices here. A also cannot sit here. So let's do, we have to take care of this first before we worry about here. Because otherwise it looks like if B is if B is here, C is here, which means A can go here, or D can go here, E can go here, and that's not the case. These are not, these people cannot sit on any, any one of these three seats. A cannot go there. So let's take care of the negative conditions first. We have taken care of this end, let's take care of that end. So A cannot go here, B is sitting here, C we have put here, which means we can either have a D or an E here. So we have two choices here. Are you with me? Let's pick a person, let's pick a D. So D is sitting here. Now we do the remaining two open spots. So either we can have A here, B is only sitting, C is only sitting, and D is only sitting. One more time, we can either have A in the second chair, B is only sitting, C is only sitting, D is only sitting, or we can have E here. We have two choices here. And this is the different answer. I told you yesterday that in my notes I had the answer of 12, and on the blackboard I came up with the answer of 18, which was the second answer. 
So it's either A or E. Let's pick a person. Let's pretend that we picked A. If A is already picked here, B is here, C is here, D is here, the only choice we have here is E. There's one there. That's it. <coughs> so the correct answer was indeed 12. 3 times 2 is 6 and 6 times 2 is 12. So there are 12 different ways that these five people can sit on these five seats given the fact that one person refuses to sit on either end and one person insists that he must sit in the middle. One person refuses to sit on either end. And you see, they don't have to say A, B and C. They can phrase the questions very differently without giving these people names. Given the fact that one person refuses to sit on either end and one person, other person, insists that he or she must be in the middle. Let's do the one bit. Let's do the problem that we were supposed to do today. Problem number five. Same, same idea, five different people sitting in five different seats, number one through ten, but we have different conditions. We're going to have different conditions. And see if you can do it, see if you can do it yourself this time. First condition being, we are told they have to sit five people. How many different ways can we sit five people on five chairs, number one through five, if A and B cannot sit on one. That's the first condition. Neither A nor B can sit on the first C and C must sit on two. Given these two constraints, given these two conditions, how many different ways can we sit these five people if neither A nor B can sit on the first chair and C must, must be on two? C insists that he sits on chair number two. C insists that she insists that, uh, that uh, C insists that he or she sits on the second chair. I'll give you a few seconds. I'll give you five seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. Do it yourself and then we'll, we'll compare your work against the work that we'll do together. Let's see what we can do. Yes. The problem is very simple, very straightforward if we go systematically. So first the positive condition. The positive condition is this. C must sit on 2. Oh, there you go. That pretty much narrows it down. C must sit on 2. That's the easy part. Neither A nor B can sit on seat, seat, seat number 1. So here we go. A cannot go here. B cannot go here. Neither A nor B can go here. So how many different ways can we fill this seat? A cannot go here. B cannot go. C is sitting here. C has to sit here. It's either D or E. So there are two ways. Let's pick a person. Let's pick a D. That's it. Let's move on to the third position now. Now that's it. There are no more constraints, so we just do it freehand now. So we still have A, A has not been set. We still have B. C is sitting here. D is only sitting here. And we have E. One more time. We have to take care of A. We have to take care of B. C is only sitting. D is only sitting. Therefore we have E. We have three different, three different choices. Uh, Three different choices that we can fill up this part, the third part. Let's pick a person, let's pick A. A is, A is sitting over there. After we put A there, it's either B here or E here. Because A is here now, A is sitting in this seat. A is sitting in this seat. B, is, B has to be uh, sit here. C is here, D is here, and E. We have two choices there. Let's pick a person. Let's pretend that it is B, which leaves us only with only E in this case. That's it. That's one choice right there. 2 times 3 is 6 and 6 times 2 is 12. Very similar problem. Very similar problem to what we dealt with just now, a little while ago. Number 4, same idea. Let's do a little bit different now, something with a little bit of twist. And see if you can handle it yourself. It says, it says, out of five people, out of five people, how many different ways? 
can we choose president, vice president, and secretary if if A cannot be chosen for president. If A cannot be chosen for president, and second condition, B must be chosen either vice president or secretary. B has to be either vice president or secretary. B refuses to be president. He says, no, I don't want to be president. I don't want that headache. I'll, I'll gladly take the position of a vice president or a secretary, but I don't want to be the president of the club. And we have five people. Out of five people, A, B, C, D, E, there are two conditions. A cannot, A is not eligible to be president. Perhaps he was president last term and it's not allowed for the same person to be president two terms in a row. So A is not eligible to be president. B refuses to be president. He says, I don't want to be president. I'll be happy to be either a vice president or secretary, but I don't want to be president. Do it yourself. Again, I'll give you five seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. Do it yourself and then we'll compare your work against the work that we'll do together. So here we go. I'm going to do the problem on the top so that we have more room. I'm going to raise this thing. We already have the problem. Remember, A, A cannot be president and B has to be either a vice president or a secretary. Those are the conditions. A cannot be president and B has to be either, either vice president or a secretary. Let's get going. So here, there are two different scenarios. Two different scenarios because B is happy to be either a vice president or a secretary. So in first scenario, uh, the B would be vice president. In the second scenario, B would be secretary. Those are the two scenarios here. So we have to do them separately. There are two separate permutations. Once we have the two separate sets of permutations, we're simply going to add up the two choices and that's what it is. So here we go. The first, first scenario. President, Vice President, Secretary. President, Vice President and Secretary. And if it confuses you, President, Vice President and Secretary. Well, what do we say? A, A does not want to be President. A cannot be chosen for President. So that's not a possibility. And B insists that it's going to be either a Vice, vice President or Secretary, which means B cannot be President leaves us with the choice of either C, D, or E. C, D, or E for the, for the, for the position of president. Let's pick C. You have three different choices. Now we can have B as a vice president. We can have a B as a vice president. Let's put him here. Make him pre vice president. And it's done. If B is vice president, if B is vice president and we have chosen C, if B is vice president and we have chosen C as a president, this is a president position, how many different ways can we fill up the position of secretary out of the five people? Secretaries, we can, we can have either A, B is the vice, uh, vice president, C is the president, which means A, D, or E. There are three ways. There are three ways, there are three different possible, three different individuals, three different possible individuals who can be chosen for the position of secretary for the club, either A, B, or E. And we have satisfied the two conditions. The first condition is that A cannot be president. Well, A is not the president. C is the president. Second condition is that the B wants to be either a vice president or a secretary, but B is ind indeed is a vice president. Now let's look at the second scenario. In the second scenario, instead of B making, vice, instead of making B vice president, we're gonna make B secretary. That's all. B is going to be secretary, and now we can figure out the rest. 
And again, A cannot be precedent. A cannot be precedent, which leaves us with a choice of either C, D, or E for the position, position of precedent. Let's make again C the precedent. So we have three choices, and we have chosen C. After having chosen C as the precedent, how many choices do we have for vice president? Well, C is the president, B is the secretary, it's either A, D, or E. It's either A, D, or E. Three possibilities. And we can pick, here we did not pick either, but we can pick anybody we want, doesn't matter. So in this club, in the first scenario, in the first scenario, the president of the club was C. President of the club was C. Vice president is B. And secretary was A. In this scenario, again, we have chosen the same person to be president. I don't know why. Vice president is A. And secretary is B. Because B wants to be either vice president or secretary. In this scenario, he is the vice president. In this scenario, he is the secretary. So how many different ways we can have, how many different permutations are in this, this, this scenario? There are nine different permutations. There are nine different permutations in this scenario, nine different permutations in this scenario. So the total number of ways, total number of ways is simply nine plus nine or 18. There are 18 different ways we can form our, we can, we can, we can form our committee of president, vice president, secretary. I shouldn't call it committee. It's not a committee, the positions matter here. Uh, there are a total of 18 different ways. Let's do one more. Let's do one more, one last one. One last one. Again, we are gonna have five people we are told that we have five people, P, Q, R, S, and T, need to be seated, need to be seated on five chairs. There are two conditions, P does not want to sit on the fourth or the fifth chair. He doesn't want to sit either on the fourth or the fifth chair. Perhaps they are way towards the end and he finds that it's uh, a demeaning for him. I'm not going to be way at the end there, four or five. Give me one to sit in the first three. And Q insists that he must sit on either one or two. He insists that he must sit on either seat number one or seat number two. Anything less than that, he is not interested. So again, we have two conditions. We're going to satisfy the first condi a positive condition first. This is a positive condition because we insisted. And then we'll worry about the negative conditions. Negative conditions being that P cannot sit on either fourth or the fifth. And again, we're going to have two scenarios because he insists that he has to be either one or two. In the first scenario, he's going to be, we're going to put him on one because that's the positive condition. We're going to do the positive condition first. He insists that he has to be either one or two, which means there are, three there are two different scenarios. He sits at either in chair number one or the second scenario, he sits in chair number two. Same as before, two different scenarios. Let's get going. Again, do it yourself. Do it yourself. I think you'll get more out of it that way. Two possible scenarios. Pause the video and do it yourself. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Let's put down the conditions here. First, the positive condition. The positive condition is that Q has to be on one or two. Q has to be either one or two. So let's put a Q here in this scenario, and let's put a Q here in this scenario. In this, in this scenario, he's sitting in seat number one. 
and this scenario is sitting on seat number two. All done. Now the negative conditions. Negative condition says P does not want to sit. P does not want to sit on either the fourth or the fifth. P doesn't want to sit either the fourth or the fifth. It cannot. Okay. So let's get going. So that's it. If P cannot doesn't want to sit on either of these two seats. Who can be put again before you start here? Do the conditions first. We have taken the we have taken care of the positive conditions. Now we must do the negative conditions. Don't start from here because starting from here assumes that, for example, if Q is if Q is sitting here, if Q is sitting here, it looks like it looks like we have four choices here: P, Q, R, S, and T. Any one of these four people can sit here. If we were to put four here, if we were to put four here, that would be wrong. Because putting a four starting from here assumes that any one of these four people can sit in any one of these four empty seats, which is not true. P cannot sit here, P cannot sit here. So putting a four here implies that, one more time, putting a four here implies that any one of these four people can sit on any one of these four empty seats, which is not true. We must satisfy the conditions first, which is why we can't start from here. That will be wrong. That will be wrong. Let's we'll start from this end and we'll worry about this end. So, P cannot sit here, Q is already sitting here, which means P, Q, R, S, and T. We have three different choices. That's all we can do here. There are only three different ways we can fill up this spot. Let's pick a person. Let's pick R. So, one more time. P cannot sit in this seat, number four. P cannot sit here. Q is sitting here. R is sitting here, which means we have either S or a T. We have two choices. We have two choices. Let's pick a person. Let's pick S. Conditions are done now. Now we'll do the remaining people. So let's start again. We still have P to go. Q is already sitting here. P, Q, R is already sitting here. S and T. Follow. So we have two choices here. Let's pick a person. Doesn't matter which you pick, I always pick the first one in the line here, that P. If P if P is sitting here, that only leaves us a choice of T here, one position. That's it. So we have Q is sitting here, 2 times 1, times 2 times 3. Two times two is four, four times three is twelve. So there are twelve different ways here. 12 different ways here and similarly there are going to be 12 different ways here because nothing has changed. The only thing that has changed only thing that has changed here is that instead of putting Q instead of putting Q in the seat number one is on seat number two but the rest of the stuff is the same. But if you insist we can we can do it out one more time. Again so that's the first condition the positive condition the positive condition is that P, Q has to be set in either one or two and we have chosen to put him in seat number two. So the positive condition is done. Now the, neg now the negative conditions. Negative condition says P cannot sit on the fourth or the fifth. P cannot sit on either fourth or the fifth. So here is the fourth and fifth, and P cannot sit here. So if P cannot sit here, what, how many? It's the same as before. Nothing has changed. Who can sit here? Well, P cannot sit here. Q is already sitting. We have three choices: R, S, or T. Let's pick R. If R is sitting there, that means we only have two choices for this seat, because P cannot sit here or here, so we are on fourth chair now. P cannot sit on the fourth chair, P cannot sit here, Q is already sitting, R is already sitting, it's either S or T. So we have two choices. Let's pick a person. Now we do the others. Who can sit in the first seat? Well, P can sit here. P, is, P has, not, uh, not, not, has not been set. P, Q is already sitting, P, Q, R, S, and T. Two choices. Let's pick a person. Let's pick P. If P sits there, then only T is left for the third seat. There we go. 2 times 1 times 2 times 3. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. Same as before. 12 ways. Of course, the same as before. Nothing has changed. You just put, instead of putting Q in the first seat, you put it in the second seat. That's all. So, what's the answer? How many different, how many different ways? A total of 24 different ways. 24 different ways that these five people can sit in these five seats given the two conditions that we had. I'll see you tomorrow 
and I'm debating whether or not we want to continue with the permutation and combination or whether we want to move on to the next topic, the next topic being the probability. Because there are some problems, I'm going to tell you exactly what I have in mind if we go that route, if we go that route, I don't know yet, until, until I make the next video. If we turn to page number 317, or well not 317 rather, on page 320, on page 320, we have some data sufficiency, uh, we have some data analysis problem. On page, on page 320, we have some data analysis problem, and among those problems are some problems dealing with the concept of permutations and combinations. And I'm thinking since we are on the topic of permutations and combinations, we should probably continue our story and tackle those problems right away to get them out of the way. We might just go that route and then we'll pick up the pro then we'll pick up the concept the, the concept of probability, the topic of probability after that. Do you understand? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.